Hey everyone, I'm Joel Green and welcome into Curiosity Quest, the show that explores what you, the viewer, are curious about. Now today, we have two creepy quest letters. One came from San Jose, George Rodeer Joel. I'm curious about how spiders create webs. And the other one came from Ryan in Long Beach and he wrote, Dear Joel, I'm curious to learn all about spiders and what's the most dangerous spider in the world. Because of you two, we've made our way out here to the Natural History Museum of Los Angeles County where we're going to crawl into this world of spiders. So let's begin today's Curiosity Quest. We are at the Natural History Museum in Los Angeles County, and I'm here with Rachel. How you doing? Hi, good. How are you, Joel? Awesome. Tell us a little bit about the Natural History Museum. So the Natural History Museum is over 100 years old. It was founded in 1913. Los Angeles was a really young city, and we had no kind of history preserved at all, and they wanted to make sure that that kind of just stays for the future. We don't have the art anymore, but we still love to focus on that. When you say history and science, is that where the spiders come in? Uh, yes, so we focus all about uh, Los Angeles nature here at the museum. Uh, so the spiders are totally part of that. We focus on all kinds of species that you can find right in your backyard, and also wow. some really cool ones coming from Asia and other faraway places. And we have Kat, our spider expert, who can tell you all about that. <laughs> well, let's go learn about them. Thank you. We're heading this way, right? Yeah, let's right, go. Cool. Fun fact, fun fact. Here's your fun fact. Hey, check this out. The color of spider's blood is a light blue color. We've made our way down to the nature lab here at the Natural History Museum of Los Angeles County. I'm here with Kat. And, and before we even get going, I just want, what are those in your hand? These. These are the forceps of science. Forceps of science. <laughs> You're scaring me. In, in addition to scaring me, I'm, I'm pretty transparent about how I feel about what we're recording. And I already said that this is creepy and I'm, I'm, a, little, I'm a little like at the willies going right now. Why is sure. that? Why do people, people feel that way about spiders? I think it's genetic. I think it goes way back, um, kind of like it does with roaches. Mm -hmm. Plus, I kind of have this theory that the more legs things have, kind of the more <laughs> freaky they are and the more hair they have, especially. Uh, and so I kind, of, I kind of think it goes way back to living in caves, spiders lived in caves, and for some people it's just hardwired and there's no unwiring it sometimes, which is unfortunate, but some people get it and they start to learn their ecology, their biology, and they're like, wow, they're amazing. We'll see if I come out on the other side today. Okay, good. All right. Um, Tell me a little bit about what you do here. Uh, I manage all of the live invertebrates and all the live invertebrate exhibits. That spider pavilion, butterfly pavilion. This is cool because when, when we started uh, examining the topic of doing a spider show, um, we do our searches and every time we did a search, you guys popped up. You know, we're in Southern California and so I was actually in Northern California and I did a search and you guys popped up too for spiders. I'm like. What is going nice. on here? The spider pavilion is really the only kind of spider pavilion in the world as far as I know. So, before we, we even think about using those tweezers, tell me, our, one of our letters was, what is considered the most dangerous spider in the world? In the world. That, that's what, yeah, it's in a, the world. It's a small spider from South America, a scintilla, I believe. It's we'll, not, we'll put it it's on the screen common. below you. This country, mm -hmm. um, we have about four spiders that are considered poisonous to humans. What, do you know the names of those spiders? Sure. Or? Okay. Well, we have the black widow, the brown widow, oh. and the brown recluse. And then other people can have allergic reactions of the 40,000, 42,000 spiders in the world. Only 200 are considered poisonous. And of those 200, what, only three out of four are, are in the United States. So am I understanding that we have like like 
potentially dangerous spiders behind us? We, we do have potentially dangerous. Uh, the good news is they're extremely shy. <laughs> they don't want to have anything to do with people. Not me, not you, not anyone okay. at all, mm -hmm. ever. Unless... What's the bad news? Just get to the bad news, forget the good news. What's the bad news? Well, the bad news <laughs> is, is that they're really, really, really prolific, especially in Southern California. Oh, so they're everywhere. Um, they're everywhere. Oh. Uh, especially I just got another chill go out my body. Okay. Not everywhere. There's like there's not one right here. There's not one right there. But they're all over the place. But there's they're right there though. They're in right the cage. there. Okay. Yeah, we got all of these right outside. What makes a black widow dangerous? It has venom, and the venom for a human causes a neurological problem. It can cause you to have heart palpitations a heart attack, it makes you feel like you're dying, oh, okay. even though you're not dying. What do spiders eat? Bugs. Insects. Flies? Uh, I don't know. Anything they can catch in their web? Food. Bees, eggs, grasshoppers, maybe ants. So this is crazy. We just went on the back side. We opened this up and then the museum opened at the same time. So <laughs> woo! I mean, we have security here protecting all the students from coming over here. And this kind of this is like this is this is pretty high tech, right? I mean pretty uh intense. This is, where, this is where magic happens. This is intense. I'm like scared you have crickets and spiders and oh my. Alright. Alright. Alright, so she's got her web. We know it's a female because the males are tiny and they don't live very long. So this is, these are all female widows right here. Okay. And this is a black widow, not a brown widow. She's pitch black, shiny black, and she has a, a red perfect hourglass on her belly. Okay. Whereas browns are brown and they have an orange hourglass on their belly. They're a little bit different. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a live cricket. Or roach or fly. Oh, or roach. Either of those oh. will work. <laughs> Even that gave me the chills. Oh my goodness. Okay, I'm gonna put it in her web so it starts to wiggle around a little bit and uh. she can detect it. Oh my She's goodness. She's throwing silk out. She silked my forceps a little bit. <laughs> yeah. I need to pull. Oh, this. Yo, you want to pull the crickets? And then can I put the thing on the top? Is that okay? Roaches and crickets just handed it to me like, yeah, Joel, you know what to do with All this. All right, so okay, okay. What, she, what, she, what she needs to do so she doesn't get hurt, is she needs to go over, give a little bite on its leg so she doesn't get kicked. The leg will become numb so it won't kick her, and then she'll silk it some more. And so she has silk that she's throwing out underneath her abdomen and using her, her back legs to kind of roll it up like a burrito. It's incredible because she was completely still, completely still, and now she's she's like like in hurry mode, I guess. This type of spider, orb weavers, they don't eat, they don't chew, so what they'll do is they'll inject enzymes into the body of the cricket, mm -hmm. which will start to break the cricket down into a liquid, and then they'll suck off the cricket. <laughs> they'll drink it like a cricket milkshake. <laughs> this is getting better and better. Yeah. How does the spider not get herself all stuck in her own web? Right. She she doesn't. If she went to another web, she would probably get stuck in somebody else's web. But she doesn't get stuck in her own web. Uh, they just don't. Fun fact, fun fact, fun fact. Here's your fun fact. Hey, check this out. Spiders are found on every continent except Antarctica. OK, we're in the lab, and you just, all of a sudden, just like no hesitation. Why are you touching that? This is our lovely oh. Texas tan, <laughs> Tammy. So mm -hmm. she's got a little bit of sand right there on her fangs. Fangs. This is her, okay. her belly is so soft. We're gonna touch her right there. So <laughs> soft, you wouldn't believe how soft she is. I, oh, you're right, I won't believe it. It's just the softest thing ever, kitten soft. Mm -hmm. Just one finger like this, Yeah. and then just right like that. It's okay. Hey, what are those? What These are, are the spinnerets. Spinnerets, so that's how she spins the... Uh... Yeah, that's how she spins silk. They're attached to silk glands in her abdomen. So tarantula, is a tarantula? This is a tarantula. Spins silk also? They do. All spiders spin silk. Oh, okay, okay. okay. <laughs> oh my gosh. Ready? Oh my gosh. Just, wait, now, wait, now, wait, now, not with your finger now, just flat. Why are you getting so close? Why are you getting so close? They're a base. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> I had like a grip on it. He's like, oh my gosh. And then look at her feet. She has these uh -huh. really soft little kitten feet, uh -huh. just like kitten feet. <laughs> and these are found only in Texas? They're found in Texas, yeah, in Mexico. This is a. Are they dangerous? Are they. They're not really dangerous. Well, okay, when you say not really dangerous. Well, if you were a little rat or a little roach or a little something that they would want to eat, they'd probably be dangerous to you. Mm-hmm. So like orb weavers that we looked at before in the nature lab, those widows, mm -hmm. they also don't have a good uh, visual system. They can't see very well. So they're really interested in touch and vibrations that are coming through their the silk that they put down all over their layer. Just tell me this, at any moment, can that thing just go and bite you and, and take you down? I could bite it too and take it down, you right? Same <laughs> difference, I'm not going to. <laughs> I, that would never cross my mind. Okay. You wanna well, see the, something else? Yes. A small or something? Small, uh, okay. Small spider, but big for its species. So what do we have here? All right, these are the desert wolf spiders. Oh my goodness. And these it's are huge. the- these are the, the runners. They also have that awesome visual system where they can track motion really well. Mm -hmm. uh, they're not limited to being stuck in a web or stuck in a burrow. They run all over the desert catching things, catching each other, catching invertebrates, scorpions. Is this a normal size wolf spider? This one's not quite. Oh my goodness. Not Holy quite full goal. grown. Oh, I had to step back. Woo. Oh my goodness. Definitely jumped. Do they jump? I mean, are they like the jumping spiders where they get, get air? They can jump a little bit, but they don't do the, like, I'm going to soar across this crevasse jump, you know, <laughs> but they can, they can jump a little bit. So her name is Petey. Petey? Yeah. Okay, let's see if Petey. Boom. Oh my gosh. There's no hesitation all right. at all. Spiders obviously have eight legs. Is that the definition of a spider? You have to have eight legs? Yep, you have to have eight legs. Every once in a while though, something happens. Like I have this Goliath here. I had to amputate a leg. Oh. And so she only has seven, but she gets she gets around just fine with seven. So with the eight legs, um, are they using their legs to bring the prey in or bring their food in? Yeah, they, they can do that. Um, especially if they're a terrestrial, a non-orb weaver, they'll use that first pair mm -hmm. to to manipulate and to, you know, crack, uh, crunch it in with their chelicera, while the other legs are for locomotion. I love your passion. Mm -hmm. I don't share it with you, but I love you your do, passion. You do, I can tell. <laughs> yeah. Well, this, is the, this is one of the ones that I would run into all the time as a kid. This is the- Oh my gosh. Just think about that for a minute. Like you're a kid and you're just walking out and then like, run right into that. And then you don't realize like you have one like right there. <laughs> you realize that everyone at home just went <laughs> But then, I mean, you like grab it and you like have it in your hand and then all of a sudden, all right, the whole, everything changes. You're not scared anymore. It's more like, oh my God. God. I touched the tarantula because you made me, and I'm still, a, we're nowhere near this. I just want to point that out. <laughs> what is the largest spider in the world? Very uh, long A black one. Um, a Mexican tarantula. A big one. Black widow. I believe it's called a crab spider. It's about the size of a trash can, and you don't want to mess with those. I'd be interested in holding some of these. This is the Goliath's most recent molt. Oh, this is, that's the molt. This is the molt. <laughs> so in order for a spider to grow, right? It doesn't just keep growing and growing and growing new uh. skin, right? It has to shed. Its exoskeleton doesn't expand like our skin expands. But what they're doing is they are pulling all eight legs out from here and pulling their fangs out from there. Oh my gosh. And then they'll pop the lid off. <laughs> this is the cephalothorax. <laughs> it goes right there to pop that off. You should see like we have we have Rachel here from the museum and then Melissa behind us. And both of their faces are like All spiders have eight eyes. Most of them have eight eyes and have what? six. That and they all have a very specific crazy. pattern. So a jumping spider has a very specific eye pattern of mm -hmm. those eight and a wolf spider has a very specific eye pattern, and so you can learn what those patterns are and figure out what the spider is that you're looking at. Here's the leg that had to be amputated. 
Ah, oh wow. You can wow. see that it had atrophied from the inside, meaning its muscles had deteriorated. Yeah. So the good news is, though, it can regrow that, that leg. They can regenerate limbs. Oh my goodness. So in the next molt, you might have another, another little leg. <laughs> and then the next wow. one, that little leg will be a little bit longer. How, how many times in its lifespan will it molt? A big spider can molt twice a year. Wow. Twice a year. Holy mackerel. Oh this is Coco. So this is the largest spider in the world? Yeah, this is one of the largest species of spider in the world. It does, you can barely tell that she's missing a leg, right? <laughs> do you, you don't handle her, do you? We don't handle her, but you can see all of her silk Gosh. right here. Oh this yeah. Is, this is her silken layer. Well, that, that's how she detects the world. This is the Mexican <laughs> fire leg. The Mexican fire leg. <laughs> AKA hot sauce. So what's the story behind hot sauce? Well, hot sauce has a unique way of defending herself. Mm -hmm. And what she does is she takes her back legs, these two legs here, uh -huh. Uh -huh. and does that. Did you see what she did? It was very quick. No, I didn't. She takes her legs and rubs it across her abdomen and takes the hairs that are on her abdomen and flicks them into me, no. whoever. <laughs> yeah. And she just molted. So Now, what happens when those hairs are flinging at you? They're really others? irritating. They oh. can go into your, your respiratory system, respiratory tract cause irritation, they can give you a rash. This is her, this is her fresh molt. Look how, how much redder she is than she was. Do spiders poop? Yeah, everything has an excrement, but do you see any poop? It's just really hard to find, you know? It's very concentrated, teeny tiny amount of liquid. Oh, okay. Um, they're pretty efficient in their metabolism. Mm -hmm. It'll waste a lot or do a lot of peeing and pooping. They do a very small, concentrated amount. How do spiders find prey? Uh, they go around the world, probably in the heat more. They come out in the heat and they're just hunting for their eggs. It gets caught in their web. They just look for them and they, and when they find their food, they just get them and they wrap them up with like flies. Some of them build webs. Um, some of them, I think they have scents. They can sense something, body heat. They make the web, they walk away, things go through the web, get stuck, wrap it up and eat it. We're in the pavilion now with Ashley, and um, so you're just, the spiders are just everywhere. They're everywhere, yeah. They're all around us right now, mm -hmm. and it's one of the most unique places in the world because there's no other place you can come and be surrounded by spiders. Yeah, that's just, yeah. this is on the top of my wish list of things to do in my life, uh, ever. And, and as soon as we walk in, yeah. look at that thing. You gotta be kidding me, what is that? That is the giant uh, Malaysian wood spider from Malaysia. And um, it's actually a female, so we've got one up there, we've got one in the back, and they are one of the largest orb weaving spiders in the world. And one of the letters that got us out of here was all about the webs and how they spin the webs. Mm -hmm. First of all, how, this web is huge. It's big, yeah. How big can it get? Um, the webs can be um, as tall as I am and even, you know, bigger than that. So this one up here is probably 10, 12 feet. And what's really amazing is that spiders like these have actually harnessed the air. So instead of tarantulas walking on the ground or wolf spiders, they're actually up in the air catching flying insects. So these guys are specialists for things in the air. So when they spin a web, do they have to have a certain amount of points on different objects in order for the web to stick? Um, well, so the, the silk that's the kind of barrier silk, um, mm -hmm. that is the non-sticky silk, and so that's oh. going to be the frame. And then the radii that kind of go out when you draw a spider web, like the real classic lines that you draw, those sure. are non-sticky. And then the um, kind of spiral is the sticky part. Oh. Um, so when a spider sits on its web, it's sitting on the non-sticky part, because you don't want to stick to your own web. That yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be terrible. You're told that this they compare it as strong as steel. Am I saying yes. that correctly? Yes. It's um, five times the tensile strength of steel. Really? Yes. That's hard to imagine. I know. Yeah. <laughs> well, they're so delicate. But if you take the same amount of steel, it's actually stronger and stretchier. That's yeah. Crazy. Well, as I'm looking off off your shoulder here, I'm seeing that there are spider webs everywhere. We have um, the big silk spiders, mm -hmm. um, which are from um, the South US. So they're from Florida and Georgia and New Orleans, um, you know, uh, Louisiana. We also have local spiders like the um, Silver Garden spider and the 
regular garden spider, which inspired Charlotte's Web. Hmm. Um, so that's the writing spider. Wow. Yeah. So can you show us what the Charlotte's, the one that yeah, inspired Charlotte's Web? Yeah, um, absolutely. Over this way. Fun fact, fun fact, fun fact. Here's your fun fact. Spiders are part of the arachnid family. That also includes scorpions, mites, and ticks. Um, I literally almost walked into this just like Kat talked about doing in <laughs> Texas. I almost did that. Wow. Um, yeah, this is a they're wood. pretty close to, this is the golden silk spider. The golden silk yeah. spider. And then all the way up there. <laughs> oh yeah, way. It stretches wow. way up there. So the web itself can be very, very big. So if we were to touch the web, it might think I'm, I'm food. Yes. And come and just eat me. Yes. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, so the spiders um, are so sensitive that when they feel the slightest touch, mm -hmm. they can tell if it's an insect, they can tell if it's a predator, something like um, a wasp that might be out to get them because oh. they're preyed upon too. Okay. Um, and if they feel the slight vibrations, they know that it's either food or an enemy. So they can uh, either run away really fast because spiders will run away when they feel something really large, oh. or they'll come down and get a snack. Right, so Charlotte's web inspired spider. Yeah, so the spider over here is called the garden spider, and mm -hmm. that's uh, Argiope arantia. And this is actually the spider that inspired E.B. White to write Charlotte's Web. Good pick, And yes. so if you look at the web, you can see the really intricate designs um, that she puts in there. That's called a stabilimentum. Yes. And it kind of almost looks like cursive if you squint. I understand we're gonna actually witness a feeding. Yes. Live. We're gonna feed them live for you, yes. Feed them, okay, all right, <laughs> let's go. Ooh. All right, so take me through what's happening right now. Okay, so she just got fed um, a wax worm, which is one of the prey items we feed them, either crickets or wax worms or mealworms. And she caught it and either she will bite it first to immobilize it and keep the animal from moving, or she'll wrap it up right away. So depending on if it's a dangerous thing, like a wasp or something that can potentially injure that spider, they wrap it up right away. How will she know if it's um, dangerous or not? It's it's usually the wing beats or something about the animal, um, you know, struggling to get to the spider because spiders are preyed upon by wasps and birds and just about everything. Um, so she'll either bite it first or she'll wrap it first. And in this case, she didn't feel any struggle from that animal. So it was a wax worm. It's not going to be injuring the spider. What is she doing with her back legs right now? Okay, so right now she's taking her back legs and she's pulling out the silk from her abdomen, from her spinnerets. Her stomach? Or? Um, kind of. It's kind of the back part of the like spider. A, a um, bum part? Yeah. Okay. And there's little spinnerets, these little glands that the silk is made out of. They can make seven different kinds of silk. So she's taking that silk and pulling it out and wrapping it around the spider. So just like you would with, you know, anything. I guess, I don't know. Wrapping comparison. paper or something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, just wrapping it around <laughs> it like string, mm -hmm. yeah. And so now she has food for later because she wasn't hungry, so she just hung it right up there. Now what is she doing right now? She's just kind of like, looks like some karate moves. So Actually, she's kinda... um, what she's doing right now is she's taking the water. Um, we just misted the web before so that you could pick it up on the camera. But she's taking the water and actually just getting it off of her legs, the little droplets, oh. and she'll actually drink that water off of her legs. Oh my goodness. So they do drink water, just like everything needs water, um, but they don't have cups or anything like that. So they take little droplets off their legs and they put it right in their mouth. So spiders are very cool animals. They're very, <laughs> um, you know, uh, misunderstood and, and they're very scary. We use them for Halloween, but when you really see them up close, they're not, um, you know, really anything to, to worry about. They're just minding their own business. Fun fact, fun fact, fun fact. Here's your fun fact. Spiders help the environment by eliminating volumes of insects. What is that? Okay, up here we have one of our other egg sacs from another species of spider. So you saw the green links with like the little poofy silk ball. Mm -hmm. um, this one is a little bit bigger. Um, this one is from one of our garden spiders here. And you can see it's kind of a, a pear-shaped yeah. egg sac and it's surrounded by other kinds of silk. Yeah. Now, will there be a you know, thousand spiders in that egg sac? There might be, yeah. I mean, there's a lot of spiders inside of one, and it kind of varies from species to species, but it can be a couple hundred, yeah. Wow. All right, right yeah. behind you, this is crazy. Look at these, it's like a wall of webs. And what's it's really neat about the pavilion is that we'll block off areas like this with these stanchions, 
so that you don't walk through them and so you know no one walks right into them they can be happy in their webs you can see them very close <laughs> so who's the lucky volunteer that gets to come in in the morning and decide what's going to be blocked off we do you do um, so we come in we're the first ones in in the morning and if we see something like this we'll put a little stanchion up um, just so that you know no one walks through it and you can see it so we're the ones who do that okay yeah. we just got another comment on facebook and one of the questions that just came in was uh, is it true that you're always within five feet of a spider? Depending on where you are, yes. Okay. Um, so the really neat thing about spiders um, is that they eat the things that eat us. Oh. So we think of spiders as being the villains, but actually it's more like insects, like mosquitoes that can cause disease. Um, and spiders can eat up to 2,000 insects a year. Wow. So spiders are actually saving us. Ashley, thank you so much. You're welcome. This is awesome. Are you a little bit less afraid now? Um, I'm getting there. Okay. I'm getting to just do I have anything on me? No. Just yes. Sure no. <laughs> yes. Wait, wait. Yes. No. There's no. Spiders you're good. everywhere. They're Look everywhere. At, like, right there. Fun fact. Fun fact. Fun fact. Here's your fun fact. Arachnophobia is the fear of spiders. It's one of the most common fears in the world. I want to thank Kat, Ashley, and everyone out here at the Natural History Museum of Los Angeles County. And I especially want to thank you, George and Ryan, for sending us on today's creepy curiosity quest. <laughs> now remember, if there's something that you want to know more about, let me hear from you. Go to curiositychquest.org, click on the send us on a quest link, and simply tell me what you're curious about. And it could be you that sends us on our next eight-legged exploration. Now remember, every great adventure begins with just one person's curiosity. So I wonder. What are you curious about? I'm Joel Green, and I'll see you next time. Although I'm filled with anxiety, you gotta admit, they're pretty cool. Oh, I just touched the web. <laughs>